Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We're coming to the close of a practical series of studies, Lessons for Life, Education from the Word of God. Today, learning to work. You say, does the Bible see any, say anything about work? Oh, yes, it does. It also gives us an antidote for laziness. You say, I need that. I'm going to stay with <laughs> you today. We're glad you joined us, and welcome to the team. Good. Practical Good. series, Lessons for Life. Mm -hmm. The Bible's a practical book, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And we're glad that we can be together. You're watching and saying, Derek, where are the other seven members of the team? And the answer is we're still in a global health pandemic, mm -hmm. and so we have restricted numbers here in the studio. But we're seeing God bless in spite of the limitations. And we're glad that wherever you are, you may also have some restrictions that we can connect together and learn more about the Word of God. We're also happy to hear from you. Write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. We've discovered many people are finding out about Hope Sabbath School during this pandemic. They're in lockdown and they're watching and searching for hope and finding Hope Sabbath School. If that's you, we'd love to hear from you. sshope, hopetv.org is our address. Here's a note from Richard in Canada, mm. British Columbia. My family and I have been watching Hope Sabbath School regularly for over a decade. Oh, wow. wow. Praise God. They've been watching from the very beginning. I keep praying that God will continue to work through Hope Channel, its excellent programming, and the people that produce it to reach more diverse people groups effectively. You know, that's something that's really important. The person continues, Richard, seeing someone who looks like you mm -hmm. serving a loving Savior is a powerful witness. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. one of the things that people write to us about with Hope Sabbath School team is we kind of look like the world. Mm -hmm. So just kind of take a look at each other and you'll notice that we don't all look the same, right? Yeah. Um, that's every nation, kindred tongue and people, and next week it may look different too, right? <laughs> As we've got a variety of people. Richard says that's a powerful witness and encouragement. And Richard, you are right. We need to not only talk about inclusivity, about the family of God being every nation, kindred tongue and people, we need to model it. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for that reminder. Here is a note from Nathaniel in Zimbabwe. Are we getting a lot of emails from yeah. Zimbabwe? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think there must be a million Hope Sabbath School members just in mm. Zimbabwe. I've been watching your lessons every day, Nathaniel writes, and I enjoy them. Mm. I'm an Adventist, and I'm learning more about the Bible through these lessons. Mm -hmm. Amen. Continue doing this great work that you're doing, and God's grace will soon fill the whole world. Mm -hmm. And we know one day we shall be caught up in the clouds of glory with our Savior, the one we've been waiting for. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Nathaniel, we'd like to meet you in person. We sense that you're a devoted follower of Jesus, and we're longing for that day too, when Jesus will return in glory. Well, here's another hand note. This one's from a donor in California. And the donor writes and says, I'm 95 years old, wow. excuse me, 94 years old. I've been watching Hope Channel for many years, but the little gift each month has been interrupted. Mm. By what? A house burning, oh. a spouse dying, mm. and illness. Mm. Mm. My plans have always been to support your program, and now I'll start again mm. with a small gift but praying for God's continued blessing. Oh. Yeah. May God bless you and the wonderful Hope Sabbath School team. Thank you. And a gift of $45. Wow. Praise God. Yeah. $15 a month. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to thank each one of you that supports this ministry. It's a donor-supported ministry. And whether a person gets $5,000 or $5, we're all part of the team. Amen? Mm -hmm. HopeTV.org slash donate. If you want to say, I want to partner, you're thinking about your giving for this year, thank you for thinking about Hope Channel. Well, here's a note from Pennsylvania. I'm the head elder of a church in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. David writes, I teach a Bible study, and I always watch Hope Sabbath School, and I get insights that help me tremendously. 
one of my favorite presenters is, and it's someone who's not here today, but you know Trisha Lee. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can tell she loves God and loves presenting His Word. Mm -hmm. And we say, Amen. Amen. We believe that. All of your presenters are good. But I really can relate to Trisha Lee. Well, David, we'll send that note to her. It will encourage her. She's a volunteer, just like the team. We're volunteers, but we believe God's given us a mission to share His good news of a better life for today and for eternity with the world. I'm sure she'll be encouraged by your note. Here is a last note from Jamaica. Has anybody... Is that home for you, Jamaica, Shana? For my family. Uh, home for your family. All yeah. right. Well, give Emily a wave then. Emily <laughs> from Jamaica. Hi, brothers and sisters. Ever since I started watching Hope Sabbath School, I've been growing spiritually. Amen. 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 That's why we do yeah. it, Harold, right? Of course. It's not just about producing TV. It's about help, helping people draw closer to God. Yeah. Emily says, I'm growing spiritually. Thanks for your help in understanding the Bible study each week. I'm an assistant Sabbath school director. Sometimes I lead out in the study. Mm -hmm. Your interactive methods have helped me to be a better teacher. Right. Yes. That's good. I look forward to studying with you each week. Well, Emily, thanks for writing to us. And, you know, that really is exciting to us. Tens of thousands of people are downloading the outline from hopetv.org slash hopess. You can get the same outline we're using in our study today. And you can start your own interactive class. And you'll see as you interact and share together how the Holy Spirit will bless. That's what we're praying for today as we talk about learning to work, it's a lesson for life. But before we do, let's sing our theme song. It's from Proverbs 19 and verse 20. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise in your latter days. Let's sing together. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise. You may be wise in your latter days. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise. You may be wise in your latter days. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise. You may be wise in your latter days. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise. You may be wise in your latter days. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise. You may be wise in your latter days. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise. You may be wise in your latter days. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise. You may be wise in your latter days. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise. You may be wise in your latter days. Be wise in your latter days. Let's pray. Father in heaven, 
This practical series of lessons for life has, has given us a real education. We, we want to learn today about work. Some of us uh, maybe didn't grow up loving work, but <laughs> help us to see that work done well brings honor to your name and blessing to those around us. May your Holy Spirit guide us in this practical study today. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, I think there's probably some people who think work is the result of sin. <laughs> <laughs> that before sin, no work. <laughs> Just sit around and, I don't know, do Relax. nothing. <laughs> but actually, if you read the book, even before sin, work was a part. Mm -hmm. In God's ideal, even in the Sabbath command to rest, mm -hmm. it says six days work. Yep. Mm -hmm. So work is an important part of our lives. Yeah. We want to discover in our study today how we can work in a way that honors God. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's get started. And Shane, if you could begin our study in the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 2, verse 15 we'll discover that even in a perfect world, it was God's ideal that we would be active in work. How does it read in Genesis 2.15? And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And the Lord God took man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Mm. So if it was perfect, <laughs> Harold, no weeds, right? No... Uh, Bugs that eat things. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've been trying to keep a garden this year. There are so many bugs that want to eat my garden. <laughs> uh, yeah. But this is before yeah. all of the yep. predators and all of the weeds and thorns and thistles. What work might Adam and his wife possibly have had to do in that perfect setting? Well, I mean, one thing that I can think of is probably arrange flowers or plants differently or maybe play around because you know that it, on this earth you can actually shape trees mm -hmm. and maybe there was some shaping involved. I mean everything was perfect mm -hmm. so probably they can have some I guess uh, fun mm -hmm. playing with the, the creation too that God has made. So it was uh, that's an interesting thought that work does not have to be distasteful. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. It can be uh, something positive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but something changed uh, in Genesis chapter 3 uh, with uh, stepping out of the plan of God, mm -hmm. and notice what happened to nature, Genesis 3, verses 17 to 19. Mm -hmm. And Kimberly, could you read that for us, please? I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. So something changed with their work assignment. Nothing about sweat of your brow and thorns and thistles in the perfect mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. Something has changed. What, Jason, what does it mean? What did the Lord mean when he said the ground is cursed for your sake? So before sin, before the situation happened, apparently, you know, there weren't thorns and thistles. It wasn't necessarily difficult for things to grow. But for those of us who've experienced trying to grow things, uh, there are weeds that you know, can be in the ground. There can be substances in the ground that can be harmful. Animals, whether it's little worms or bugs that might want to harm the plants. So apparently things within the earth itself became harmful to the plants and uh, man had to remove them in a process that was a lot more painful. Anyone who's weeded a garden or weeded any kind of plant knows what I'm talking about here. So why do you think God did that? Why did he curse the ground for their sake? Is, is he just mean, arbitrary? You say, no, Derek, we've learned in this series that God is a God of love and he wants a relationship with us. He wants to be close to us. In some way, the cursing of the ground, Brittany, was for their benefit. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about that. Yeah, I was just thinking about how... Um, you know, when you work, you learn a lot of lessons. And one that they might have learned is, I can't do this on my own. I need your help. 
And mm. so there was a form, a way of teaching them dependence on God because they had to depend on the, the water, they had to depend on the sun, they had to depend on all of these things that they couldn't control in order for their, their food to grow and for them to have something to eat. And so it was a, a lesson on dependence on God, just like they were depending on him for their physical needs, they can depend on them for their salvation. Okay, so that lesson of dependence, mm -hmm. yes? Uh, also, also, that's an opportunity to learn about the character of God, mm -hmm. because actually nature is like the second book aside from the Bible. Mm -hmm. And um, if you think about it, when you have to care for something that you have planted, it's like God caring for us. He's trying to weed away sin. Like that's like the worms, the bugs, trying to destroy us. And that's the lesson that they can get. Like, wow, I'm caring for this. This is what God is doing in my life right now. Mm -hmm. The way I'm caring for this plant or this animal, Every day that I'm thinking about, think, God thinks about, uh, about me every day. Mm -hmm. And He's the one who leads, who controls the growing through the Holy Spirit. So it's like, wow, there's so much like object lessons that we can get in that experience. Uh, a year ago, or was it just at the beginning of this year? I guess it was the beginning of this year. Um, we got some organic vegetables and, and one of them, it was in a box of vegetables that was sent to us during the, the pandemic when mm -hmm. things were closed. And there were these little red peppers. They were round. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, I'll try one of those. And inside, there were little seeds. And I thought, I wonder if I could plant the seeds. I'm not an experienced gardener. And I planted the seed. I probably planted half a dozen. And they grew into little plants. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's amazing. I wonder mm -hmm. if I can grow some peppers. But, you know, I learned a lesson, and I want to hear some lessons from you. Mm -hmm. My plant started to grow, and it started even to get nice uh, green peppers that would later mm. turn red. But then a dreaded hornworm came. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's a long green worm with little horns on it, mm -hmm. and it can strip that pepper plant in probably a matter of days. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I was shocked when I saw it, and I thought of a lesson, Harold. I thought of a lesson. I thought, if I don't deal with this problem, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you share? Was that true, by the way? Yeah. It was yes. true, right? Uh, can you think of a lesson you've learned from nature? You know, God apparently allowed us to have a harder time with nature to realize that sin damages everything, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't just cause death to human beings. Sin is the, the wages of sin is death, but it damages everything. But there were lessons that could be learned. Anyone want to share a lesson you learned uh, from working with plants, gardening, working in nature, um, that, that was a valuable lesson for you? Mm -hmm. Brittany. Along the same lines of what you were talking about, my brother and I had a lawn mowing and a uh, gardening kind of business, a landscaping business, and we would often weed large, huge landscape um, flower beds, and there would just be tons of weeds. And something that I learned is that it's best to pull out the weeds when they're tiny until waiting till they're huge because they get deeper roots and they get a lot harder to pull out. Sometimes you have to get a shovel when they're tall, but when they're little, you can just pull them out with one finger or two fingers. And um, so the same with sin. Uh, when we first start having maybe negative thoughts that are leading us down a path, if, if we surrender those to God, um, you know, we're first starting to maybe do act on something that's not appropriate. If we say, God, help me in this, when it's small, it's easier to take care of than when we just uh, let sin grow in our lives and become, have this strong foothold. God can still take care of it. He can still give us victory, but it's a lot harder. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes we plant things and uh, they don't grow well. Mm. Yeah. You know, I had a little melon and, and it started to rot on the end. Mm. Uh, what lesson could I learn from that? Never plant melons again. <laughs> I mean, no? Shana? Could have been the environment. Like, was the melon in the right environment that would foster its growth to mm. the right size? Mm -hmm. So what would you tell me to do? <laughs> Reconsider the area that you planted in. Um, and yeah, even the, the different... Um, what do you call it? Like your, oh. your nitrogen levels in your soil, those mm -hmm. things are important when you're planting as well too. So there are lessons about God's care for us mm -hmm. by the way we care for the melon. <laughs> and don't give up just because one melon doesn't make it, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
there's more melons that can come. That's a simple lesson, isn't it? <laughs> but I think, uh, I think actually staying close to nature mm. uh, is, is a good thing. Did, did any of you grow up uh, where as part of your education, you were involved in working with nature? Jason. Uh, yes. Uh, the high school that I went to was a work-study program. So in the mornings, we would work. And in this case, it was weeding organic carrots. So I really got my hands into the soil and had to experience some of the toil referenced in Genesis. And then in the afternoon, uh, we would have classes. And so I got to have a mixture of intellectual academic study and also physical study with my hands. How did that work out for you? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm you not... You didn't decide to become a professional gardener, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> so that's the thing. I'm not someone who necessarily loves to work with his hands. I prefer the intellectual stuff, but it was good because it kind of helped me be more well-rounded and appreciate physical things, even if it's not natural to me what I would enjoy. Mm. One of the things when we're talking about learning to work is not only that work is part of God's plan, mm. even from the beginning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm but that God actually wants to bless the work of our hands. Mm -hmm. Let's look at a couple of passages that reinforce that. Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 15. Deuteronomy 16 and verse 15. Brittany, how does that read in your Bible? I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Deuteronomy 16, verse 15. Seven days you shall keep a sacred feast to the Lord your God in the place which the Lord chooses, because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and in all the work of your hands, so that you surely rejoice. God wants to bless the work of our hands, mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. What is necessary in order for that blessing to come? Faithfulness. <laughs> you have to work. You have to work. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yes. God's like, I'm ready to bless the work of your hands. We're going to talk about laziness a little later. But God cannot bless the work of your hands if you're not doing anything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So what does it mean in practical terms for God to bless the work of your hands? What do you think? Mm -hmm. What do you think it meant back in, in the, the day when Moses was speaking, Brittany? Well, that the people had a job to do, that they had to plant, they had to harvest, they, they had to tend the animals, and, and God was going to bring about fruit from that. Um, he was going to provide for them, but they also needed to depend on Him, and they had to work. They, they needed to unite with Him in work, and, and He was going to help them have everything they needed. Shana, did you want to add to that? Yeah, I'm thinking of um, Jacob. When he it had was to, coming through my mind, the <laughs> same story. Tell us, tell us the so story. So when he had to work for his wife um, and his father-in-law gave him like a certain set of, he gave him the spotted um, animals, I believe, to take care of. And Jacob was like, okay, he worked and God multiplied his animals to be more fit and more in number than um, his father-in-law's animals. So it's like, God was like, you do 50 and I'll match it and multiply <laughs> it for you. It's interesting. We both thought about that same story uh, because it was not so much just good return, mm -hmm. but saying, God, I want to honor you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God says, I'll bless the work of your hands. Right. And yeah. that was a witness to his uncle Laban, yeah. who mm -hmm. was a little bit unscrupulous, unfair, yeah. unfair maybe. <laughs> yeah. uh, but there's an example. Can you think of any other stories in the Bible where God actually blessed the work of someone's hands? Yes. Well, I think Arrow. of Joseph, mm -hmm. uh, the son of Jacob, mm -hmm. that um, he ended up as a slave, but yet because of his good work ethics and remaining faithful to God, he was promoted mm -hmm. um, in first in uh, Potiphar's house. And then he eventually over time, he became the second in command of, of, over all Egypt. And it was because of his faithfulness to God and to his work, good work ethics. Mm -hmm. And I guess we learn from that story, you might go to prison in between, right? Mm -hmm. For sure. Because the enemy was not happy with that witness. Yes. Yes. But you're right. It says there in, in the book of Genesis that God blessed Potiphar's house on yeah. account yes, of yes. Joseph, right? Yep. Yeah. And then the nation too. Yeah. And then the whole nation, in mm -hmm. fact, the surrounding famous. nations were yeah. blessed too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That God blessed the work of His hands. Have you seen 
in your lifetime someone who honored God. They were a great example to you in many areas of life. But you saw God bless the work of their hands. And you said, you know, that, that's a witness, just like it was uh, in some of these Bible stories. Jason. So my, uh, my grandpa is a farmer, and he has both uh, crops, and uh, he also had uh, cows at one point. And it was just amazing for me to watch his faithful work ethic. You know, he'd be up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. He'd be out there taking care of the cows. He'd be out there uh, planting and, you know, doing all the farming processes. And so for me, it was just fascinating because he was faithful in the work that God gave him. And he was also faithful in his spiritual life, too, because then he would come in and uh, we grandkids would be there and he would have worship with us in the morning. We'd have breakfast and then he'd go right back out and continue working. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I'm thinking of a businessman who's a good friend of Hope Sabbath School and of Hope Channel who started a car dealership as a young man. Mm -hmm. And he said, not going to be open on Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And people said, you're crazy. Saturday... Mm -hmm. is the big day. Yeah. But he determined that he would honor God mm -hmm. and treat his clients with care and respect in a way that honored God. Mm -hmm. And his dealership grew to be one of the most successful of that particular, um, what do you say, that ne the brand oh, okay. yeah. uh, in the whole country. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Uh, because he determined he would honor God, God blessed the work of his hands. Mm -hmm. um, what could that look like for you and what you're doing today? Mm. What could it look like? What could it look like caring for mm. students who have speech language issues? Yeah. Well, right now, since we're doing things virtually, um, I'm doing a lot more of interaction with the parents in order to help the children. And okay. so I'm connecting with the children and doing therapy with them. But I'm also connecting with the parents and I'm also connecting with the team, the special ed team and the teachers. And so it's a lot of um, intentional contact, whether it's email, phone call, Zoom meeting, um, where I'm just really investing in those children and trying to provide multiple resources for them to keep growing even when they can't be in the school building. So it's um, just depending on God for wisdom because each child is so special and unique um, and has different challenges that they face. So would it be an appropriate prayer uh, whether I'm uh, writing an exam? Mm -hmm. Say, Lord, bless the work of my hands, right? Mm -hmm. And my head because yeah. <laughs> I've got to write down or keyboard in, right? Uh, if I'm going on a, uh, doing a research project, going on an interaction with a client, mm -hmm. God bless the work of my hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever I'm doing, is that yes. a prayer I could pray? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. And, and like Shana said earlier, he can only bless the work of your hands if you work. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right? We'll get to the lazy part a little <laughs> later. But yeah. he wants us to be active and yeah. to do work. We want to look at one other area in terms of learning to work. It's the lesson for life, and that is... God not only wants to bless us like he did more spotted goats and spotted sheep, freckled right. sheep or whatever they were, but he, he is honored when we do our work with excellence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before we think of someone that reminds us of that, let's go to the scripture and look in the book of Exodus. There's a story of an artisan, a craftsman, Jason. If you could read from Exodus 35, verses 30 to 35, um, let's learn about this um, excellence in work that honored God. And I've got the New King James Version here. Exodus chapter 35, verses 30 through 35. And Moses said to the children of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Ur, the tribe of Judah. And he has fulfilled with him He's filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding, in knowledge and all manner of workmanship to design artistic works, works in gold and silver and bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of artistic workmanship. And he has put in his heart the ability to teach in him and Aholiab, the son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill to do all manner of work of the engraver 
and the designer and the tapestry maker in blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine linen, and of the weaver, those who do every work, and those who design artistic works. Now this is not just for a craft show or a market. This, what's the context of this the craftsmanship? Sanctuary. The, yeah. the sanctuary, right? Mm -hmm. So the pieces of furniture and the curtains, all of the weaving, this is all what these individuals are working on. Mm -hmm. um, what impresses you as you read about the special gift that's given to these workmen? Mm. Yes, I'm just reminded, many times we think about, um, you know, God gives gifts to the pastor or to someone who's involved in some sort of evangelistic outreach. But here we have people who are art artisans, people who are, you know, are maybe painters or sewers or, you know, tapestry makers. And it doesn't matter what line of work we have, God can fill us with his spirit and we can work for him in any line of work. It's not um, the title that you have, but it's your willingness uh, to be filled with his spirit. Mm -hmm. Can you think of other Bible characters besides uh, Bezalel and his friend? Mm -hmm. What was his friend's name again? Uh, Not a well-known man. Uh, Is it Aholiab? Aholiab. Yeah. yeah, I've never heard of him before except just reading him now. But, but when he worked, the excellence of his work mm -hmm. honored God, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Can you think of any other characters in the Bible uh, where the work that they did, and it may not be uh, carving, or, but it, it may be whatever God called them to do, they did it with an excellence that honored God. Some names that come to mind in their story. I'm thinking of David when he was a shepherd. Mm -hmm. Like That was such a huge um, testimony. He was just a little shepherd boy, and then he goes out onto a battlefield. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure he was well-rounded in his craft as a shepherd, um, and that built his faith so that he could go out on a battlefield with two large armies and stand up against a giant. Mm. Right. I mean, the excellence in his work came from that sling, right? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And the sling was a shepherd's tool, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. In fact, he said he'd used it on several occasions, right? right? Yeah, with a bear. lion. With a bear and yeah. a lion, yeah. right? Yeah. And so now he has this huge target, <laughs> yeah. Goliath, right? <laughs> but he learned excellence in his work, and that, that work honored God. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. We talk about God-centered learning in a previous study. But while he was watching the sheep, what was he doing? In nature, <laughs> too. He, he, he was, nature. well, I'm sure he was practicing with his sling, but he was also writing scripture songs, yes. Yes. right? Yeah. Like yeah. Psalm 23, yeah. which yeah. says, Lord is my shepherd. Shepherd. It doesn't get better than when the Lord is your shepherd, right? Yeah. Yeah. He leads me, right? Yeah, Green pastures, still waters, restores my soul. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful example of one who even in what some might consider a humble mm -hmm. work assignment, yeah. because the shepherds were kind of looked down on, mm -hmm. right? A humble work assignment, he honored God in that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, thank you. Yes. Uh, oh, I think of Daniel and his friends. And what makes it more interesting is that he's, they're foreigners and they're captives under, you know, this king. Mm -hmm. And yet their duty is to first serve God and yet serve faithfully, of course, the king, as long as it, the, the king doesn't interfere with their, you know, uh, beliefs. And yet they were promoted to be great advisors. When, when Nebuchadnezzar even saw that the three friends would not bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's statue, they were like, wow. Their testimony was very powerful that in the end, it did have an impact for him to believe in God. And yet, as you said, and I think this is really important, you know, you can go to your employer and you can say, you know, I, I don't work on Sabbath and I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to steal things from your, from your store or whatever, mm -hmm. but to also do good work, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That in itself is a witness. And you're saying Daniel mm -hmm. and probably the Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego as yeah. well. But Daniel, remarkably, that when the kingdom that he's serving in falls, what's the rest of the story? The next person yep. says, can you stay on? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's something about the excellence, the excellence of his work mm -hmm. that really honors God. That's a great illustration. Mm -hmm. Anybody else that you can think of that the excellence of their work? I'm thinking of some ladies mm -hmm. where the excellence of their work honored God. And one, one may be an unexpected one. Yes. Oh, along the line of the ladies, Dorcas, um, you know, she was a follower of Jesus and she was making um, 
clothing, it, it seems, for people that were in need. And she was looking out for others. Um, and, and Jesus praised her for that. And, um, you know, or maybe not Jesus specifically, but Paul Peter, and, and, and Peter, Peter who and raised everyone. her from the, yeah, the dead. Yeah, she was right. raised from the dead. But even when she died, people were bringing the things that she had made and saying, look what she did for me. Look what she did for me. And so the little that she did made a huge impact in people's lives. I'm thinking bad workmanship would be the widow's weeping and saying, she made this and it <laughs> fell apart. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> but they're actually coming and saying she made this for us and, uh, and we love her because yeah. she, she mm -hmm. served us. Mm -hmm. what, what about Hannah? Uh, keep, mm -hmm. keep your one, uh, Shana, there. But what about Hannah? What was the excellence in her work that honored God? Mm -hmm. Jason? By being a mother and by, and by raising her son to be prepared to serve God in the temple. Mm -hmm. And what kind of environment was it in the temple in mm -hmm. those days? Shana? Lewd. It was lewd. Um, the priest's sons would go out and do, you know, ludicrous acts. Um, they were sleeping with women at yeah, the door of the getting temple drunk and, and getting drunk. Mm -hmm. And so it was not a good environment. Mm -hmm. And do you remember some things that Hannah did that showed her commitment to excellence in the work God had given her? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, first of all, she raised him. She must have instilled in him um, a desire to know and love God because when he went there, he was faithful to God even in the midst of that surrounding. Um, but every year she would bring him a garment that she had made specifically for him that would fit him that year. And I'm sure as she was making it, she was praying over it and just, you know, asking the Lord to protect her son. Oh, Lord, bless my, cover my yes, son. Yes, cover mm -hmm. my Not son. Not just physically, yes. right? So there are lots of different ways that our work can honor God, Shana? Yeah, I'm thinking of another mother, uh, Mary, who her work in raising Jesus in the right way was instrumental in his role as the Messiah. Mm. I mean, you could say that either way he would have turned out to be the way he was, but I'm sure that her role as, you know, being an excellent mother to him was instrumental in, in fulfilling God's mission. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. God uses people, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in my favorite book on the life of Jesus, The Desire of Ages, it says that he could call only God his teacher, mm -hmm. but, but God used Mary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was homeschooled, you know, mm -hmm. because the rabbis wanted to indoctrinate him in their traditions. Mm -hmm. But uh, God used a godly mother mm -hmm. and her work was excellent, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why she will be called blessed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We recognize the great work that she's done. Well, let's, let's, um, let's talk about why excellence in our work is important rather than just saying, well, I'll just do average work, Harold, just do average work. What did Jesus say in Matthew 7 and verse 12 in the mm. Sermon on the Mount? Some people have called it the golden rule. Yep. You know, there are other rules that other teachers had. Um, I think Confucius said, don't do to others what you'd not want them to do to you. That was a rule. That's a good rule. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't like people to hit you, don't hit them. But this rule of Jesus, I think, could guide us even in our work. Yes. yes. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. It reads, Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So if you're going to um, buy a used car, uh, you would hope that the mechanic had fixed it well, right? Yes. Yes. You say, Derek, I'm not a mechanic. Well, maybe I do something else, right? I, I, um, tell me something that you do. You know, I, I bake bread. Mm -hmm. Not very well, but I'll try. <laughs> But I want to do it the very best I can mm -hmm. because I would want a person to do the same for me. Yes. yes. So I want my excellence to bless them yes. following the golden rule. In fact, doesn't Paul say that everything we do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. where is that found? Do you remember that? First Corinthians. Corinthians. First Corinthians. Ten. Kimberly, could you read that for us? Uh, chapter 10, I think, verse 31. Mm -hmm. um, that, that everything we do should in some way bring glory to God. What, mm -hmm. is, yes. what does Paul say to the Corinthians? Shall be reading from the English Standard Version. So whatever you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Mm. So I'm doing, I'm sweeping, cleaning mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. helping, uh, helping someone with the task. Mm -hmm. 
part-time job, mm -hmm. <laughs> doing it all to the glory of God. Yes. Um, that excellence in our work honors him. Mm -hmm. Have you seen someone that has inspired you like that? Mm -hmm. Harold? Well, actually, I was going to say that when we don't like work to do things excellently, it kind of is a reflection of our character, which uh, also f falls upon God because God does everything perfectly, right. does everything excellently. So we being children and, and of God, being daughters and sons of the King, we should also do the same. And we shouldn't be overly hard on ourselves because we sure. are imperfect, Co but correct. to do the best we can. Yes. Have you met someone like that? You go, whatever she does or whatever he does, maybe it was a grandparent or maybe a friend, just really they put their heart into it and do the very best they can. Brittany? I'm just thinking more of my upbringing. My mom um, really taught my brother and I to do everything to our best ability. And even at a young age, we had this job chart on our ha in our um, kitchen, and it had little hands that were Velcroed with each of our names on it. And it had different chores, like cleaning the bathroom or uh, washing the dishes or vacuuming or ironing or doing laundry, different things that um, were chores at the home. And each one of us had a job, my brother and I and my mom. She gave herself hands, too. Mm -hmm. And um, she took it from the Bible verse, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all of your might. And so um, what I loved about the, the, I didn't always enjoy the, you know, the chores that I had to do, but um, my mom did them with us because she mm -hmm. also gave herself chores. So it okay. wasn't like, oh, you just go, you need to go and do your job and, you know, leave me alone. She was like, I'm going to do a job and she would demonstrate mm -hmm. how to do that with excellence. And then my brother and I would try and then she'd help us if we needed it. Um, and it just taught us responsibility. It taught us joy um, in, in a job well done. And it, and it brought us back to the Bible because whatever Whatever we do, we want to do it um, to God's glory and with all of our might. That's powerful. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, I love to see those little felt hands up there, you know, but yeah. what a lesson that she was leading by example. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have someone that, that you got to meet growing up that, or that you know right now that just was an example of wanting to do things with excellence to honor God? Yes, Harold. Well, I had a high school teacher, and the funny thing is that the high school teacher taught me so much to include, like, how to write essays, how to do s public speaking better. I still struggle with it. But, um, and he was, to me, almost like a father because I did not, my father passed away when I was young. But everything that he did, he was, he always came in a, with a suit to the school, always. Doesn't matter if it was hot or cold. Everything that uh, he required was had to be like excellent, and but he will help you if you failed, and um, he'll always be uh, very early, like in school, like he was the first one, and we will walk in and always at, willing to help, and I'm like, wow, actually I do eventually, you know, want to follow his example, because he was so inspirational. He's been able to bring up like the reputation of the school. He was like hosted on TV because of his good work ethics and working with the students. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Even like the worst students respected him. Mm -hmm. ah. Wow. Even, everybody passed his exams, even the state exams. And people are like, what are you doing? Like, how do you do it? And that was so inspirational. Mm -hmm. Is he still living? Yes, he's still living. Wouldn't it be wonderful if they could watch this program? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should send him a link. Uh, sh share what a witness that excellence in work was. Mm -hmm. And now, when does it become unhealthy? Mm -hmm. Striving for excellence. Is there a place where mm -hmm. you go, wait, <laughs> this is not healthy? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember even Jesus telling his disciples, come apart and rest a while, mm -hmm. because they were, they were so work. working so much, they mm -hmm. didn't even have time to eat. Yeah. Uh, when does that striving for excellence uh, become unhealthy, do you think? Mm. Kim? Um, I can think of two, Pastor Eric. So one is if it affects your health. So okay. the example you gave, the disciples aren't eating, they're not nourishing their bodies. Mm -hmm. um, so that would affect their health. So it becomes, your life becomes imbalanced? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Out of balance? Yes. And two is um, you have to look at yourself. And if you're striving too hard in your work because you want to reach a certain rank or maybe make a lot of money, then that kind of shows that you may be proud mm -hmm. and you're not helping. So the motive. Mm -hmm. Yes, the motive. Mm -hmm. Again, then, if the excellence is to honor God mm -hmm. rather than to do better than you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, that's a totally different way of approaching things. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got a few minutes left in our study. You, you say, Derek, you mentioned about the antidote to laziness. Because one thing that Shana told us earlier is God can't bless the work of your hands if you don't do any work, mm -hmm. right? Yep. 
works part of God's plan, even in a perfect world and now in a, a damaged world, is part of God's plan. Yeah. He, he wants us to do it with all of our might uh, and to bless the work of our hands. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the antidote for laziness, shall we? Proverbs 21 and verse 25 and Proverbs 6, verses 6 through 11. Solomon has two words of counsel mm -hmm. regarding an antidote. We want to learn how to work. Jason, do you have Proverbs 21, verse 25? I've got the New King James Version here. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 25. The desire of the lazy man kills him, for his hands refuse to labor. Mm -hmm. The desire of the lazy man kills him. For his hands refuse to labor. Well, if you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, Solomon gives us a little help as to how to get out of that rut. Maybe someone's watching and saying, wow, that's that industrious attitude of wanting to honor God and be a blessing to others. Uh, I didn't grow up with that. I don't mm -hmm. have that. Um, help me. Well, mm -hmm. let's take a look in Proverbs chapter 6. Uh, verses 6 through 11. Brittany, it's, a, it's a, another lesson actually from nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Proverbs 6, verses 6 through 11. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. How long will you slumber, O sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler and your need like an armed man. So we're gonna learn from the ants, right? Mm -hmm. um, has anyone ever had an, an, an ant colony build an ant hill in your, in your yard? Oh. No? You, I've been in parts of the world where yeah. they get really high, mm -hmm. but, but I've seen them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what happens if you knock it down? It's pretty Don't it's build interesting it. inside. It's a matrix. What do you see, Sh yeah. Shana, if you knock it down? Um, so I've actually seen a video of someone pouring like liquid nitrogen or something inside, and it forms like a, comp it's like a complex apartment. Um, there's different levels and different layers. Like, and, like a mm. apartment complex. Yeah, <laughs> a complex of, or apartment complex. Mm. Yeah, and so um, they live there, they eat there. Um, it's pretty amazing to see, actually. Mm. And what happens if you knock it down? Does well, anybody know? I guess they build it again. They mm -hmm. don't give up, do they? Yeah. yeah. They go build it somewhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You hope somewhere that's not in the middle of your lawn, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they build it in the woods or somewhere like that. There's this level of persistence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else? What else can you learn from ants, Brittany? Well, it said that they don't have a captain, so they don't need someone to look over them and mm -hmm. tell them you need to do your job. They just do it um, without even anyone watching. Um, and another thing is they're working together. I, mm -hmm. I've often seen ants in a trail, and they're all helping carry something. Maybe it's a big leaf or flowers or whatever it is, and they're not holding it by themselves. Many times they're kind mm -hmm. of like a trail holding it together, and so we need to work together as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anyone else? Lesson from ants. Besides the fact it. that they bite. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they store, according to the scripture, they plan ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jason? So they build things that, going back to what Brittany said about bringing it together, they build things that help each other, that allow them as a community, mm -hmm. as a colony, as they would say, um, to be able to live together. So what they do isn't just for themselves, it's also for their fellow mates, if you will. Mm -hmm. So a friend comes to you and says, by the way, there is a text that says, I think it's Second Thessalonians 3.10, if you don't work, you can't eat, yeah. right? That ought to motivate some people, but there'll still <laughs> be someone standing out at the corner with a cardboard sign, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, do some of the people with the cardboard signs have genuine needs? Yeah. Sure. Yes. So how do you figure out which ones have genuine needs? Because not all of them do, do they? Correct. How do you find out the genuine ones? You have to talk, spend time. You'd have to stop and talk to them? Yes. Okay. Build I heard someone who did that and gave them $2 and they kicked the car because they said, you only give me $2, kick mm. the car. 
Um, mm -hmm. I guess you have to pray for wisdom, yes. right? Yes. Yes. There may be someone genuinely having a hard time mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit may impress you to help them significantly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there may be other people who are lazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what do you do if you're giving them money and they're just lazy? What do you call that? You're perpetuating the same. You're perpetuating the cycle, and that's mm -hmm. really not going to help them. Mm -hmm. So I guess we need to be praying in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, if they really are lazy, what's the way we can help them? Mm -hmm. Let's say a friend comes to you and says, um, you know, um, I just don't feel like working. Mm -hmm. In fact, I don't feel like doing anything. Mm. What? Pray for wisdom here as you answer the question because sometimes we judge people as just being lazy. Mm -hmm. What would go through your mind if someone said, I just don't feel like working, I don't feel like doing anything? Mm -hmm. Brittany? Well, first I would want to know um, how is their health? Mm -hmm. Are they um, impacted and mentally or physically that is preventing them from feeling good about themselves or feeling like they have energy? Because I have a lot of friends or people that I know that are struggling in that area and they aren't able to work because of their health. Mm -hmm. So if there's a genuine need, try to help them in that area before saying, well, you need to go find a job or something like that. Or you, you're a sluggard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the joke to the ant, right? Mm -hmm. So I like that non-judgmental attitude. Let's find out why they don't feel like doing anything. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a health issue mm -hmm. that we could help them with. Uh, Jason, what else might be behind a person? I just, I just I don't feel like getting up in the morning even, let alone going to work. So some people might be that way because maybe they've worked themselves too hard. Maybe they're exhausted because they've actually... Uh, while they've done good work, they've gone too far. And so when you work yourself too hard, then you might go to the other extreme. You're like, I just don't want to work at all. I just need a break. And so with that person, I'd say, let's try to find some balance here. Let's try to figure out how to have a schedule so that you can have healthy work, but also have healthy breaks as well, rest as well as work. We have an expression in English, we say burned out. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, It's like, you know, I guess with a candle, if you keep the candle burning, it will eventually be used up mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. so it could be just sheer exhaustion they've mm -hmm. they've not had balance in that area what else might cause a person to feel mm -hmm. i don't even want to get up let alone go to work i think of like some sometimes people might be hopeless mm -hmm. especially those people who don't have an understanding of god or like they don't know the meaning of life and at times they question like why am i even working why even bother to strive because in the end everything is meaningless mm -hmm. i have no purpose that so, sounds like a depressed state, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So you might encourage that person to get some professional help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what about just the plain old lazy person? Sure. <laughs> you know, they've, they, they haven't worked themselves out and they're not sick and uh, they're, they're not depressed. They're just lazy. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Maybe I would hope no one's watching like that, but let's say someone is. What would you say to him? I think they need a mentor because many times people in that state, they haven't been taught to work. They haven't like been like taught, your mom with the yeah, little gloves. they haven't gloves. been taught the value of mm -hmm. work and how it, it actually brings joy when you have a job well done. And so maybe they need a mentor who will give them something small that they can do at first and yes. then give them more responsibility as they show themselves trustworthy. Because um, to just throw them into a job where they're working full time, it might be a little too much for them at first. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you a chance to give a testimony at the end. It doesn't have to be anything profound like I built the pyramids mm -hmm. or I <laughs> developed, you know, just a time when you did some work and you really felt blessed. You mm -hmm. felt like God blessed the work of your hands. You enjoyed it. You honored God in it. Can you think of a time like that, Shana? Yeah, um, yeah so in the past two years of my teaching um, commitment, a significant part of teaching is building a relationship with your students. Um, and I had eighth graders, and my first year was really just a hot mess. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hard age, isn't it? Yeah, what, they're, would 13, be like 13 they're between years old? 13 and 15. So, right. um, mm. you know, they think they're adults, and they're not <laughs> 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 children. Um, but I struggled through my first year with building relationships because of the variances in background. Um, but over the summer, I was like, okay, you know, I have to do this and I have to be a better witness to these kids. And um, during my second year, it was like, you know, pouring into the students and then they ended up pouring into me, like relationally. Um, and even now that I'm not teaching anymore, I still have students reaching out to me all the time, like, hey, Miss Greg, we miss you. <laughs> um, 
And so just like the, it's not physical labor, but um, emotionally connecting with them, being intentional about it. Mm. Um, because they, they often express that they can't relate to other teachers um, as they relate to me. And it could also be the age difference because mm -hmm. I'm closer in age with them. But um, yeah, I had to be intentional. I had to put in work to build relationship with these children. Um, and it's, you know, showing by um, me also wanting to foster uh, positive relationships with them throughout their lives as they go into high school and beyond as well. Did you ever have days that you said, why am I doing this? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So doing work that honors God is not always easy. No. Mm -hmm. But as you look back, uh, two years, Yeah. Um, what would you say the most important lesson you learned about um, work in that educational setting? Um, humility is important. and trusting that the difficult the most difficult kids like you just have to continue showing them love mm -hmm. and from our perspective the love of god um, because they i worked with a population that um, is uh, inner city and so we have a lot of, of students coming in with that are troubled mm -hmm. and so you show them the love of god and you know for the first three months, they'll just act up, act up, act up, and then you, you'll gradually see um, a change, and it's the most amazing and profound thing ever. Mm. And Shana's smiling when she <laughs> says that, mm -hmm. even yeah. though sometimes it was the hardest thing you ever did. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, when God gives us a work to do, He gives it for our blessing, really, doesn't He? He wants to bless the work of our hands. He wants the excellence in our work to honor Him. And when we do that, he is there to uh, honor us in ways that we may not expect. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're lazy today, I hope the lesson has inspired you to say, God, help me to work so that you can bless the work of my hands. If you're working too hard, slow down and rest. If you're going to work next week, say, God, fill me with your spirit and bless the work of my hands. Mm -hmm. yes. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for helping us to understand that even our work is a witness yes and may our work whatever we're doing bring honor to you and blessing to those around us i pray this for each one in jesus name amen amen, amen. well what we learned today we can put into practice every work day take what you've learned say god let me honor you in the excellence of my work go out be a blessing to those around you